She agreed, stating she would change clothes and gather tools before they departed. Bai informed her mother that she was going out with a friend to handle something and would have Auntie Lee keep her company. They arrived at the mountain. She warned him to be careful, mentioning the presence of poisonous snakes and insects. He reassured her, suggesting she just pay attention to herself. She informed him that they would pass through a certain area soon, explaining that her dad had taken her through there before. Despite being a difficult path, it was a shortcut. He agreed and told her to lead the way. She thought to herself that he had been walking for a long time without even breathing heavily, wondering if he could be a martial artist. She also considered that the phantom flame grass they were looking for must be very valuable and hoped to pick a couple of stems. He called out to her, pointing out that it was surprising they hadn't seen any other person's footprints along the way. She replied that it had been a really long time since she last came to the mountain with her father and suggested he might have found another route. He cautioned her that her dad wouldn't abandon a familiar path without a reason. She expressed her concern, saying that was the only road she was familiar with, and asked what they should do. He suggested they keep moving forward with caution. On their way, they encountered some holes in the ground, and from those holes emerged poisonous ants. The ants attacked Bai, but Wang Tang managed to save her. She thought they were doomed and cried, stating that it was all because of her. But he simply vaporized the ants with a single attack, she was surprised to find that he was, in fact, a martial artist. He advised her to stop being in a daze and to be careful where she stepped, adding that he wouldn't be able to do anything if a poisonous snake bit her. They then arrived at the location. She noted that her dad had seen phantom flame grass nearby and suggested they search there. She was able to find some, and he decided to go down to get the grass. While he was collecting the grass, a poisonous snake appeared, but he instantly killed it. But then, a lot of snakes appeared and tried to attack him, but he easily killed them also. Bai was amazed. He decided to take some extra grass as there was a lot of grass there. He stated that they should go back. She exclaimed if he was done so quickly. Internally, she pondered how powerful he must be to easily handle the deadly snake. If only she were as strong as him, she could make a lot of money. On their way down, he halted. She inquired why he stopped. He responded that someone was there. She speculated if it could be her dad and the others. Indeed, it turned out to be her dad and the others. She approached her dad and expressed relief that they were all right, mentioning she had been worried all night. Her dad questioned her for entering the mountain despite his warnings. She explained that someone had offered money for her to show him the way, and they had already found the phantom flame grass. The black-haired boy addressed Wang Tang, asking if he had picked up the phantom flame grass. He mentioned that he had indeed collected it, and remarked internally on the newcomer's likely status as martial arts students from another school. The silver-haired boy expressed disappointment at their luck on their first mission, while the black-haired boy insisted they couldn't just retreat. The brown-haired boy inquired if Wang Tang was also gathering the grass for a school task, to which Wang Tang affirmed, asking to be let through as he was in a rush. The black-haired boy then explained their instructor had tasked them with collecting the grass and questioned how they could complete it now that it was taken. Wang Tang retorted, questioning why it should concern him, and drawing a parallel to what they would have done if the situation were reversed. The black-haired boy told his friends there were three of them, and only one of him, so they should just go and grab it from him. They drew their weapons and attacked, but then suddenly they stopped because a one-star beast appeared. The three were scared to death. The beast attacked Wang Tang. Bai told him to run, but he just one-shotted the beast. Everyone was shocked. Now that the three had seen Wang Tang's power, their tone had completely changed. The brown-haired boy said there might have been a misunderstanding between them just now. Wang Tang responded that misunderstandings were not what they claimed a while ago. The brown-haired boy, scared, insisted they meant to say if he picked the phantom flame grass, it was his. The black-haired boy agreed, saying they were the five good youths of the new century and would not forcibly take it from him. Wang Tang asked if they did not want to fight. The silver-haired boy replied that they did not. Wang Tang then mentioned that he was thinking of sharing a few with them, but since they did not want it, they could forget it. The three then left. Wang Tang told Bai if they could, they should take the flesh and blood of the beast, as it would be of great benefit to them. She agreed and he decided to leave. The three boys had reached the foot of the mountain. The black-haired boy expressed that it had been so scary, and that he would definitely keep a low profile whenever he went out from now on, fearing he might run into an expert. The brown-haired boy wondered which school Wang Tang was from, noting how scary he was. The black-haired boy speculated that he might be from a military academy and might participate in that year's national martial arts competition, which would reveal his identity. Wang Tang managed to submit his assignment before the deadline. He was exhausted. He planned on taking a shower and resting, but he was unaware that a mysterious woman was watching him from behind. The woman attacked him. He punched the woman, but she managed to catch his punch. 
The woman was extremely strong. He attacked her, but she easily stopped his attack. She started throwing one powerful attack after another. He barely missed her attacks. He knew he couldn't win against her. He decided to run to the corridor and shout out loud so someone else could deal with her, as there was no other way he could save himself. But she had already set up a rune formation in advance, so there was no way for him to get out. He decided to face her. He went on the offensive and tried to land a punch, but he ended up almost getting kicked. That was the first time Wang Tang had fear in his eyes while fighting someone, but he was still not ready to give up. He attacked again, but she easily stopped him. She stated that his attack was just flashy and didn't have any actual impact, but his attack was just a distraction. He quickly flashed towards the door and knocked it down. Before he could leave, the woman turned on the lights and stopped fighting because her nail broke. He asked the woman who she was. She told him to guess. He addressed her as Big Sister, which she didn't like, and told him to rephrase his words. Seeing the situation he was in, he called her Miss and asked what she wanted. She said she was informed by Lao Peng that their school had produced an outstanding genius and asked her to come back from the battlefield to have a look. Wang Teng was shocked to hear the dean's name and was about to say who she was, but before he could, she told him that she was the principal of his school. He was more than shocked. At first, he wasn't sure if she was joking or not. He knew the name of the principal was Tan Tai Xuan, but then Lao Peng came and told him that she was, in fact, the principal and that she was there to test his abilities. He wondered why she was testing his abilities, even though they had already been completely exposed. She told Lao Peng to stop rambling, assuring him everything was fine and he could go back. She said she would handle Wang Tang's matter, and he should quickly get back to the school's affairs. Lao Peng retorted, pointing out that she had dumped everything on him and disappeared without taking responsibility. She then forcefully kicked him out and told Wang Tang that she trusted Lao Peng to handle everything because he seemed capable, Wang Tang responded sarcastically, asking if Lao Ping should thank her for that. He thought it was rare to see someone speak so openly and honestly about slacking off. He told the principal that if she didn't have anything to do, she should go and rest. He mentioned that he was going to be busy in the morning and needed to prepare for his early classes. The principal responded, asking what the hurry was since they hadn't even talked about the main topic yet. She pointed out that he was quite the hidden talent, being at the level of a three-star warrior with the strength of a four-star warrior. She noted that he could still focus on being a multi-attribute warrior and began to calculate, mentioning ice, fire, gold, and wind, and wondering if there was anything else. He thought to himself that these four were sufficient and that other attributes must not be exposed in front of her now. She then said they'd assume it was just the four elements for now, acknowledging that every warrior has their own little secrets and she wouldn't pry too much since it wasn't a big deal. She added that she had encountered a few multi-attribute warriors before, but unfortunately, she had killed them all and couldn't see much of their abilities. He thought that not only did she have a bad personality as a school principal, but she was also ruthless. He asked how many martial artists from the four clans had been defeated. She asked if he was afraid of her. He laughed awkwardly and complimented her, calling her a principal of grand stature with unparalleled elegance and charm, and professed his admiration and respect. She called him sweet, but then demanded that he prostrate himself and lower his head. He was taken aback and asked, what? She questioned whether he was unwilling, pointing out that as a general-ranked warrior, she had the qualifications to be his master. He thought to himself, wondering how she could think she could become his master. He quickly agreed, saying if she wanted him to be her disciple, she should have mentioned it earlier, as he would have done it already. Internally, he acknowledged her rank and saw becoming her disciple as a strategic move. She noticed his discomfort and asked if he could prostrate himself or not. He suggested updating the tradition by offering her tea and cooking her a meal as a token of appreciation, just as a disciple should. She saw through his ploy and told him if he didn't want to do it, then he didn't have to. He said he'd go make tea for her right away and offered her tea. She noted that he had prepared it properly and suggested holding off on the food for now, explaining that her standards were very high. She would consider it when he reached the level of a master chef. She mentioned that she had never taken on any disciples because it was troublesome, but this time Pang had urged her repeatedly, and she had found him to her liking. He responded with an okay while thinking to himself that she was so arrogant she then remarked that over the years, people used to show off their apprentices in front of her, but now she got to do it. She warned him not to disappoint her, or else he would face consequences. He asked who these people were, and how strong their disciples were. She replied that even if she told him, he wouldn't know them, as they were all at the level of battle generals. As for the disciples, she guessed the strongest one had reached the level of a six-star battle soldier, but that had been half a year ago. He was shocked. She mentioned that being her disciple still had its benefits and brought up what had happened to Chen Xiangming last time. 
She assured him that if anyone dared to rely on their seniority again in the future, she would take care of them. He responded enthusiastically, saying that she was really kind, and asked if he could use her name as a reference if he ever got into trouble in the future. She acknowledged that he was an unruly kid, but that was exactly what she liked about him. She gave him permission to use her name, adding that those who were afraid of her wouldn't bother, and for those who weren't afraid, it wouldn't make a difference anyway. Wrapping up the conversation, she told him to come to her place the next night, as she had to teach him something. He bid her farewell and in his mind, thought he had finally got rid of the crazy woman and could start picking up the attribute bubbles. He was confused by one of the bubbles. It gave him the black-bellied attribute. He thought about how black-bellied the principal had to be to have such an overflowing attribute. Then he went to check on his egg. It didn't look damaged, but all of a sudden it started to crack. He first got worried, but then calmed down, realizing the egg could just be hatching. Sure enough, a raven hatched from the egg. He was disappointed that a raven had hatched from the egg of a star beast. He wondered how he was going to feed it. Since it was a star beast, he decided to feed it the meat of the star beast python he had killed. He then went to his master's house. He was surprised by how big it was. He rang the bell. His master answered and told him to sit. She asked him if he would like to eat. She ordered some food as there was nothing in the house. She told him she knew about his powers. He was shocked. She explained that his goal wasn't just to outdo his peers, but to outdo everyone. His competition included young, talented warriors, not just his classmates. She, as the teacher, had met invincible warriors who had even defeated many from the older generations, who now cried for their parents. She said he was her apprentice, and if he wasn't better than her, he wasn't much worse. He thought to himself that this witch talked too much. She added that there was no need to rush because they had such talent in the senior class. She would set a goal for him. He would duel one of the 100 best students every day until he reached the top. He protested, telling her that this would make him a huge target. He didn't want others to resent him. She asked if he was scared and pointed out that if he defeated them all, they would only respect and fear him. The strong stick together so he wouldn't be alone. He reluctantly agreed and she reassured him that duels were common among warriors. Most would lose, and after a good training session, get back to the arena. There was nothing to worry about. The doorbell then rang. She told him to get the door because she was starving. The man who was delivering the food asked who he was, and he told him that he was her disciple. He brought the food inside. When he opened the food, it was shining like the sun. She told him that the food was a masterpiece of the chef. He asked why the food was shining. She told him that it was because of the chi. He didn't understand. She explained that magic cooking revolved around star beasts and elixirs. With special cooking methods, they stimulated the original chi in the ingredients to achieve the effect of cultivation. That's why the master chef had to be a warrior. He nodded and said he understood, noting that only a warrior could sense and use chi. She added that the mainland could only run this kitchen for so long, making it extremely rare. She told him to come with her because they were going to join another teacher for dinner and then play some sports. He mumbled something about it not being a good idea. She laughed and pointed out how skinny he was. He clarified, chuckling awkwardly, that he meant it wasn't good to exercise right after eating. She mentioned that she wouldn't be handing out personal tips like cultivation methods and warfare strategies that easily. From then on, she'd suppressed her strength and sparred with them to build his fighting awareness and experience. After all, that's what really mattered to a martial artist. Many warriors who came from the battlefield didn't have profound cultivation techniques, but could still easily defeat those so-called talented warriors. Having strength without the necessary combat skills would be pointless, and she didn't want him to become that kind of warrior. Then she told him that that day they would fight, and she attacked him. She was proving to be too strong for him. She was keeping him on his toes without much effort. He realized that she hadn't used much strength the last time they fought. She went on the offensive and sent him flying back. After half an hour, Wang Tang was on the ground. He was knocked out by a brutal attack. She called her disciple foolish, saying it was for his own good. In the future, she explained, he might encounter people who would use deadly force against him. She was just trying to reveal his potential. Then she added that he would be fine and should get some rest. She advised him to go to the pharmaceutical department and buy a bottle of black jade ointment, which would rejuvenate his body and allow him to continue training the next day. 